Um, breathe in, breathe out. We good? We yes. good? All right. Yes, we're we're worrying about. I've got a hair that is is pulling on on the the back of the microphone cord. Yeah. And I'm trying to. And to, that's stressing you I'm out. I'm trying to loosen the hair without you know like being obviously <laughs> well, ripping it out of my. This is good TV, by the way, folks. Oh yeah, okay. thank you, Kevin, there for you taking go. care of that. Yeah. All right. It's still, I do what it's I still can. pulling, so I can't move my head. So you'll have Megan. to forgive me while I do this. Help us out, Megan. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can give you the news. There you go. <laughs> Here's what's happening today. Raging River is closing early for the season because there was not enough workforce. This has been a trend, and Jessica Roos will have the updates on when it's going to close down. And the big powwow is coming up soon. We'll get a look at what UTTC is doing to prepare with baking you in. And as always, don't forget to follow us on Twitter and with Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. These sliders are going to be the most flavorful ones you've ever had, and it's perfect for the upcoming holiday weekend, served with warm, melted cheese, Learn how to make baked ham and Swiss, Swiss sliders. Nice and warm like the day, right, Claire? Mm -hmm. Maybe add a little bacon yes. to those sliders. We've got just a few issues with visibility this morning. We've got a dense fog advisory in effect until 11 a.m. And let's take a look at the current visibilities across the region. And in Bismarck, visibility is about a quarter mile, down to half mile in Jamestown. But everyone else is seeing the fog lift. Still, the... Dense fog advisory in effect for all counties shaded in gray until 11 a.m. Central Time. And this includes Burley and Morton counties. Now, our weather in motion shows us that by 1 o'clock this afternoon, temps will be in the low to mid 70s. And we're in the Goldilocks time, meaning it's uh, a Goldilocks day today. Not too hot, not too cold, not too windy. Just about right for any kind of outdoor activity. And uh, we're going to see lots of sunshine, highs in the Mid to upper 70s, as you can see by 5 p.m., we'll be in the mid to upper 70s to around 80, and light winds throughout the day. Now, tomorrow morning, we'll drop down to around 60 for overnight lows, and then back up into the 80s we go tomorrow, mid to upper 80s for some of us on Thursday. So just a little warmer tomorrow. Really nice day. Get out there and enjoy it if you can. All right, thank you very much, Cliff. 903 coming up on 904 on North Dakota Today. Now, next month, I'm really excited about this. Next month, North Dakota Today is celebrating its first birthday, and we're going to do it by giving you the gift. That's right. We're giving a gift of a makeover, courtesy of JCPenney and Sephora at the Kirkwood Mall. Now, all you have to do is email Kevin a picture of yourself and tell us why you deserve a makeover. The winner will be drawn at random and the winner will receive a hairstyle and outfit from JCPenney and makeup from Sephora live on the show September 9th. So don't worry that we, you know, we're going to be <laughs> we're going to be what? judging your look or anything. No, 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 no. No, <laughs> no one, there's no judgment going on. Yeah. We're just going to pick the photo at random yeah. on Monday prior to that Tuesday when we do the big makeover live on the show at JCPenney and Sephora here. That's right, it's Kirkwood gonna be fun. Mall. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks to all the people over there at Kirkwood Mall for helping us out to put this uh, all together. All right, it is Wednesday, uh, Wednesday now, 904 on North Dakota's Today, and that means the one and only Mandy Schott from Central Dakota Humane Society. Welcome back. Good morning. Now, you have a very chill dog here. Yes. I mean, he was just splayed out on the rug. There he goes again. Yeah, so. Is this a girl? Yeah, this is a girl. Okay, oh, it's a girl. Yes. Okay. Okay. No, right. she's a girl. Okay. Chili is Chilly. her name. Chili. Right. <laughs> and as you can see, she kind of, you know, fit, her name fits her personality. And that is actually how she got her name. She is about a year old mm -hmm. and she was a stray. Aww. One Look of our her. employees actually found her. And um, our employee has a, a young daughter, and the uh, Chili spent an evening with them. Uh, we were not able to get her into the shelter right away till the next morning, so she stayed overnight, had a sleepover. And uh, our employee's daughter said, you know, Mommy, I want to name this dog. I think her daughter's about four or five. And I, um, she was such a good dog and just kind of chilled out all night, so I want to name her Chili. So, okay. Well, she's chilling out <laughs> right now. What yeah. a, a well-behaved dog. She is she... a very sweet dog. She's only been with us for a couple of weeks. She just came off quarantine, so we don't know a whole lot about her. And like I okay. said, she was a stray. She is about a year old. She's not spayed. Uh, but boy, she is a nice girl. She has got some interesting markings. Yeah. What do we think here? What's she, going well, on? Well, we're thinking uh, she does have a little bit of pit bull in her. 
and um, maybe you know, some Dalmatian. Maybe some Dalmatian. You know, we're yeah. again. She's one of those Heinz 57, which is yeah. sometimes some of the best ones. <laughs> she definitely got the spots. Yeah, she does. Yeah. Um, one of the your cameraman said she kind of looks like the dog in in that show Homeward Bound. And I, I think you <laughs> might be right about that. But yeah, if, she's, okay, so again, if someone wants to adopt Chili here, what do they have to uh, do? They would. Uh, we need them to come out to the shelter to visit with Chili, and uh, we ask that you visit at least twice. Yep. If you have a dog, we'd like you to bring your dog or dogs out to meet. We'd like everybody in the household to come out and meet just to make sure everyone's comfortable and then after those visits we do have the individuals or families that are interested in our our pooches or our kitties fill out an application. It is an application process. We may have more than one person or families that are interested in the same animal and so then we you know have a tough decision to make. We try to make the best decision yeah. for the pet. I have so. to say I think this is one of the more sedate dogs She's you've ever brought. She's a sweetheart. Yes, she is. Yes, wow. she is very, very sweet. Very nice. <laughs> Look at her. She's just There's so nothing relaxed. wrong with this girl. And she does, I mean, she does respond to, you know, some basic commands. And she rode very well in the in the car, too. Uh, it was a little foggy out there, so um, we were, you know, a little tense on the way in. But she sure did well. She sat in her kennel, didn't make a peep all the way in, right. jumped right in. So she's, she's, she's going to go fast. I think she, so, Chili yes. is a sweetie there. Yeah. Now, as we move into the colder months here, mm -hmm. where we're mm -hmm. right on the cusp of fall, and then, of course, winter's on the way here, yes. what do we need to keep in mind when it comes to our pets as we make that transition to colder weather? Well, I think we need to keep in mind, you know, now is also the hunting season, or it's starting, going to be the hunting yeah. season soon. I think we need to just, you know, make sure that we remember that, you know, putting your, you know, going for a quick ride and throwing your dog in the back of the car without any kind of, uh, you know, protection is probably not not a good idea, especially I mean anywhere. You know, whether I actually you're in town saw a or, dog jump out of a car on the highway once. I believe you. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and that is or you know, a truck, you know, and that is never up. you know we yeah. never want things like that to happen. So you know, if you have to keep them in the back. Uh, you know, first of all, a short-haired dog like this is going to get colder, you know, faster than a dog with long hair. So you make sure that you've got them in an enclosed carrier, that the carrier is attached to the... I'm, I'm not trying to defend that that sort of thing, mm -hmm. but I think people just don't think. Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the dog in the back of the pickup truck is kind of iconic. 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 Yeah, yes. it's iconic, right. you know? Yeah, I mean, come on, let's go for a ride. Yeah, yeah but, let's But, you know, go. I've also seen dogs that have been tethered in, in the back, and that looks like it could be dangerous oh, as it well. Oh, it could be horrible. Yeah. What, you know, what if the dog jumps out and is still attached by mm -hmm. the you know by the yeah. neck I mean you can't stop your vehicle fast enough to go out and save right. that dog I so mean, it needs might. to be in a kennel it needs to be it. in a kennel and we've already seen some injuries with kittens it's cold so if there's a kitten that is trying to find a warm spot sometimes they'll crawl that, up into the engine that is another big problem I yes. actually had this happen to me I went out one winter morning jumped in the car started it up mm -hmm. heard a horrendous screech oh. I, it totally freaked me out, so I immediate I knew what happened. Mm -hmm. uh, so I turned off the engine, popped the hood, and I saw this little cat, the neighborhood cat, just go flying yes. out of that engine compartment. And we've already had, like I said, a couple of kitties that have come in just within the last week with some severed limbs. Yeah. Oh, no. And we don't know for sure if that's what happened, but we're guessing that, mm -hmm. you know, with the chilly evenings that we've had the last they couple. They crawl up into yes. the engine block compartment just to get warm. Yeah. And the easiest thing to do is, you know, if you do have a vehicle outside, is to just, you know, before you get in, just bang on the yeah, on the hood and yeah. wait for a couple of minutes and generally that'll scare them enough to have them jump out. Mm -hmm. The other thing too is you know now as it's getting colder antifreeze oh, if yeah. you you know are going to start to use antifreeze. Is that really a thing? Absolutely. Yeah, really? It's sweet, right? It tastes, it's really sweet. It tastes very good. I don't know myself. I haven't tasted it, okay. but I understand to the, the dogs or cats, it does taste sweet. Mostly dogs, I think, okay. is what the issue is. And it is just very toxic and, and lethal in very small doses. So that's another thing that we want. There, there is some antifreeze that is safe for pets. So if you do you know, have a boat or a car and your pets are around your vehicles, that might be something that you want to check into. Okay, well, that's good advice. And yeah. then, and, you know, now... I've had cats and dogs, mostly cats, that go out and find, you know, like little critters or mm -hmm. rodents, that sort of thing, want to bring them home yes. and, and be praised for finding them. Now, <laughs> is there any, anything to worry about there? I mean, that's Absolutely. kind of the... Absolutely. Well, it, again, it's getting colder, and so those little critters that are out in our yard are wanting to come in, mm -hmm. and if we use poison to, you know, get, get rid, rid of, of those. them, and the, and the dog or cat eats that rodent, they also can, and you know, you that can be a serious poison. situation, And, of too. course, you don't know if somebody else in your neighborhood, right. if you let your dog that's run. True. Yeah. That's true. Right, right. So, again, you know, just keep, I, I mean, our advice is, you know, always just keep them close to home and keep an eye on them. If you've got a fenced-in yard, that's great. They can, 
still get some exercise, take them out for a walk. You know, just be careful and be aware of what's around you. One, one final thing when it comes to the cold weather. Do those doggy sweaters and doggy coat, whatever, you know, do oh, they shoot. really help? Do they really work? Well, we use them all the time out at the shelter. And right. we've got some outside runs for our dogs, and especially with short-haired dogs like, like Chili. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> she, you know, they need a little bit of protection. Well, and our, and our dogs, you know, their feet, they won't keep them on. So unfortunately, they Boots. won't wear them. But, <laughs> but they, when they go outside,